grieve to leave Thornfield. I love Thornfield. I love it because I have lived in it a full and delightful life, momentarily at least. I have not been trampled on. I have not been petrified. I have not been buried with inferior minds or excluded from every glimpse of communion with what is bright and energetic and high. I have talked face to face with what I reverence, with what I delight in, with an original, vigorous and expanded mind. I have known you, Mr. Rochester. And it strikes me with terror and anguish to feel I must be torn from you forever. So I see the necessity of departure. And it is like looking on the necessity of death. Where? Well, you, sir, you have placed it before me. In the shape of Miss Ingram, a noble and beautiful woman. Your bride. But you will have. That you have said it yourself, I must go. I tell you, I must go! Do you think I can stay here to become nothing to you? Or do you think I am an ultimatum, a machine without feelings, and can bear to have my morsel of bread snatched from my lips, or my drop of living water dashed from my cup? Do you think, because I am poor, obscure, plain and little, that I am soulless and heartless? You think wrong. I have as much soul as you and full as much heart. And if God had blessed me with much wealth and beauty, I would have made it as hard for you to leave me as it is now for me to leave you. I am not talking to you now through the medium of custom conventionalities nor of mortal flesh. It is my spirit that addresses your spirit, as if we had passed through the grave together and stood at God's feet, equal as we are.